What's good, YouTube? I appreciate y'all tuning back in. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment, share, do all that for me, and I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to record this part of the video inside just because it's raining outside right now, but I wanted to make sure I still gave these tips before starting the seeds. And then what I'll do is I'll show how to make the seed starter mix that I'm gonna use, how to actually plant the seeds, and then I'm gonna show what I did with the soil in that earlier part of the video as well. And then I'm gonna actually show the setup that I have in my garage with the seedlings and the seeds that I'm currently trying to germinate right now before I transplant them outside. So I wanted just to give a couple quick tips and these are all the seeds that I have right here. I've got a, like a drawer full of seeds. I have them separated by basically in different categories. So like these are the herbs right here, beans, some peas, my peppers right here, but I got, got them all separated. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start some of the peppers and start some of the tomatoes and then some of the eggplants, some of the like the nightshade plants that have like a long seed to harvest period. I'm gonna start some of those and show how to start some of those. And then once it gets warmer, then of course I'll just transplant them outside. But I wanted to give a couple quick tips first on making sure that you do everything you can to have the conditions right so that you have the high, as high of a germination rate as possible. So first thing I wanna talk about is like the medium. Typically, I think you're not supposed to use like regular pot and mix to start seeds because it can burn the nutrients can burn the seed um that's worked fine for me over the last couple of years but i am going to do it a little bit differently this year with the seed starter mix that i'm going to make but uh, i think generally you want to use a good seed starter mix that has maybe enough nutrients to get this get the plant started or even something that doesn't have any nutrients just something that can stay moist really just kind of cultivate like a real good a rate of germination for the seed the conditions that you want to keep it in is you want to make sure that the soil stays stays moist the entire time and then you want to make sure it stays dark as well so you want to put it in a dark area or just plant it deep enough that a lot of light is not seeping through some seeds are aided or their germination is aided by sunlight or by light in general but for the most part you want to find something or you want to be able to plant it in an area or find an area where it's dark enough to make sure the seed germinates properly and it stays moist and stays humid as well so those are the three things that you really need for the, for the seed to properly germinate the humidity the moisture and then the darkness as well and then the last thing to think about is like the lighting situation so of course once it sprouts then you need to make sure it has enough light to be able to continue to grow so ideally you would want to start them in your sunniest room whatever room in your in your place or your home or your apartment is the sunniest that's where you would want to start the seeds at if you have a greenhouse that's warm enough that's a good place as well too and then if you have like some grow lights indoors that'll work as well too so i don't really have a whole lot of sunny rooms in my home but I do have a couple grow lights and I'll show what that setup looks like. That way the seeds are able to really be able to take in that light before they go outside into the into the sunlight. And some things to avoid, like I said, going right back into the light aspect. If you don't have a good light source, it may not be best for you to start seeds indoors. It may be best to just wait until the growing season just to transplant some plants and just transplant some seedlings. And by no means do you have to start seeds this early to have a good growing season. And it's really better if, you, if you're not able to take care of the seedlings, it's better just to buy seedlings later on when they can go ahead and go outside and let somebody else do the, the hard work for you. But this is really for some people that have the space and the amount of room to be able to really grow the seedlings and germinate the seeds properly. So some things to avoid is places that don't have a lot of light or if you don't have a lot of space to take care of them. And then another thing to avoid is letting the soil dry out. So if the soil dries out, it can completely stop the germination process and it can actually keep a seed from germinating altogether. But if you keep it moist, it should be able to germinate in within a couple days for most plants and then within a couple weeks for a couple other plants if needed. But like I said, what you wanna do is make sure that that soil stays as moist as possible and then you have a good light source once the seed actually sprouts. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show exactly how I made my seed starter mix and then I'll show my setup for where once the seeds actually sprout from the soil, um, the setup that I have for them to be able to get light and then once the greenhouse is warm enough then I'll go ahead and put a lot of things outside of the greenhouse and then transplant them in the garden once they're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the camera around. And so these really are the only ingredients that I'm gonna need to get the seed started with. So I got dry peat moss here. I mean, you can see it's pretty, it needs to have water added to it, but peat moss is a good organic material that holds water really well. Um, and then I got the perlite. So the perlite basically does the opposite. It gives a little bit of aeration uh, to the soil and to the starter mix. So all I'm gonna use for the starter mix is, like I said, the peat moss and then the perlite. And I'm gonna mix that at a two to one ratio, like two parts uh, perlite and then one part per, or two parts peat moss and then one part perlite. Then I got the small cedar tr seed starting trays, the real small like plastic trays. And I'll transplant uh, the seedlings once they sprout after a couple weeks, I'll transplant them into their final, um, like their final pots or keep them in bigger pots until I can transplant them outside. And then I got the seeds that I'm gonna start. So I started a couple, a couple weeks ago. What I'm gonna do is plant some more like leafy vegetables, stuff that can handle um, like the cold weather, like spinach, kale, lettuce, broccoli, stuff like that. 
and then I got some more peppers that I'm gonna start. Um, I got about five different, uh, five different uh, like varieties of peppers, and then some more tomatoes, and then eggplants. And then these are just plants that have that take a long time from going from seed to harvest. So you want to start them as early as possible if you had a space for it, and then transplant them once they get warmer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a tripod just to show how I mix uh, the perlite and the peat moss together. Like I said, it's a two to one ratio. So two parts peat moss and then one part perlite. So we got a simple recipe here. Like I said before, it's just a two to one ratio of peat moss to perlite. So for every two parts of peat moss, I'm gonna add one part is perlite. So here I'm adding a perlite. So since I added eight parts peat moss, all I'm gonna add is four parts perlite. So here I'm adding water just so I can add some moisture to the medium and then I'm gonna mix it up until all the materials are distributed evenly. So as you can see, the mixture is moist now um, and it's fully incorporated. So all I need to do now is just add it to the seed starting trays. All right, so now that I took the seed starting uh, mix, I went ahead and filled up the, the seed starter kits or the seed starter trays. So what I got right here is 72 cells total and it's split up into 12 different sections. So it's six in each section. What I'm gonna do is I got, I think 12 varieties of vegetables, like different vegetables like eggplant, uh, tomatoes, peppers, strawberries, and whatnot. What I plan on doing is playing a different vegetable in each uh, cell. So this one, like this one over here, would be like eggplants, or this one right here would be jalapeno peppers, and this one might be habanero peppers. But all in all, what I'm gonna do is pretty much plant six of each variety in each one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep a couple for myself, but then I'm gonna also uh, start some seeds for some other people locally as well too. So getting right into it, what I want to do, I'll zoom in real quick. A good rule of thumb typically is to plant a seed about a quarter of an inch or a half inch um, in the soil. And if you use your pinky, like that's probably the best way to like determine it. So if you use your pinky, it's about halfway on your pinky, um, depending on what size pinky you have, but um, it's about halfway on your pinky that you'll need to poke down. And then you don't wanna like, you don't wanna just like cover the dirt and pack it down. What you wanna do is kind of like just just sprinkle it over a little bit just so it covers it because like I mentioned before the real, the conditions that you need the soil to be in is a moist condition uh, somewhere that's humid and in a good temperature uh, so what you want to do is keep it somewhere it's like it, it'll be moist under just a couple like maybe half an inch of soil and then just cover it up a little bit and just keep it moist and what I like to do too is as you see I drop you know two of the seeds in there you might not be able to see it I'll try to zoom in a little bit more um, but you can see like I dropped two seeds in there and what I'll do is whatever plant is stronger um, I'll end up keeping that one and then I'll just pull the other one up or either clip it at the root so like I was saying you want to just cover the cover the soil like this and typically what you want to do if you have dry soil is water it what I like to do is when I'm mixing the soil go ahead and water it and keep it moist in that way I don't have to drown it in water and it already has a moist environment and then as it gets you know dried out some um, and what I'll do is I'll put like a clear dome over it as well but once it gets dried out some then I'll just you know spray a little bit like a little spray bottle I'll spray a little bit of water on the top just to keep the surface moist and then after a few days it should sprout so I didn't like the other angle I didn't like that it wasn't zoomed in enough for you to be able to see the seed so I, I wanted to get it at a little bit of a better angle so here you see I have I already dug a small little hole right there then I'm gonna drop the two seeds in and then just cover it with a little bit of soil and usually, like I said, you would be watering at this point, but I went ahead and made the soil moist all around. Um, so all I'm doing is just kind of covering up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for each, you know, each other cell as well. All right, so I got pretty much everything planted. Um, I didn't finish putting anything in this cell right here, um, but I'm gonna figure something out. But for the most part, I pretty much got everything else planted that I wanted to plant. So I got a couple different strawberry varieties there. 
uh, heirloom tomatoes, eggplant, celery, cherry tomatoes, and then five different varieties of peppers. So what I'm gonna do is I got like a little setup in my garage on the table with um, like one of my smaller grow lights. Um, I'm using it in the garage right now just to um, I get my greenhouse a little bit more warmed up. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan over and show what that looks like. But this is where I'm gonna place these. So I'm gonna place these. I'm gonna probably put like a little dome over the top of them just so it stays humid. And then once the, you know, once everything pretty much sprouts, I, hopefully by the time it sprouts, it'll be warm enough to go ahead and just put it in the greenhouse. But if not, I'll keep them under those lights until I'm able to transplant, transplant it into the greenhouse or either outside into the garden. So here's the setup that I have in my garage. And then I'll go back to this in just a second. But under this is the seeds that I just planted. But some, these are some of the seeds that I started previously. So going back to my original statement when I was talking about making sure that you have the right amount of space and the right amount of lighting. So this is a prime example of if you don't give the plant or to give the seedlings the proper amount of lighting up front. So this is some kale that I like a little kale blend that I started a couple weeks ago. And you can see how the, the stems on it is are really stretched out. Um, that's really called that's called being leggy. And what happens is, is is the stems are stretching out so they can reach the light. Before I put this setup in the garage, I had it by a window and I just don't think it was getting enough light. But what it does is it stretches towards the light source and then if it stretches too far it really uh, messes up like the integrity of the plant's health it'll um, basically make it a little bit more susceptible to damage and to disease and to pests as well so you want to make sure that you have the right amount of light source so the stems won't get too leggy or anything but i think they're recovering pretty good now they seem to kind of sturdy it up a little bit so i think it should be fine and then this tray right here is just some of the herbs that i started so not all of them have germinated yet but you can see a couple of them so like that's some cilantro right there um i think this is parsley that just sprouted and there's some basil right there um real small but you can see like that's some chamomile that just sprouted not too long ago here's some sage right here and this is dill right here i believe um, so this is just what my current setup looks like and then i have like a grow light right here that's hanging and i'll show what it looks like i'll turn on the power real quick to show what it looks like and then I got another one right here and then another grow light right here as well. And then it's just on this table. And then so when I was talking about keeping the humidity whenever you plant a seed, so I'm using just like this little tote right here. I'll move it out of the way. But these are all the seeds that I just planted that I just showed earlier. I got the tote over it so you can see that the seeds are moist or the, the soil is still moist. And with this tote that I got over it, one, it being clear. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over. But one, with it being clear, I can see through it and see when stuff starts to sprout. So when it does sprout, I can pull it out and make sure I put it over here under the light. And then by the time, by the time these sprout anyway, I'll, I'll be putting a couple of these outside since they're like leafy vegetables. I'll be able to put them in the greenhouse with the current weather that it's in right now and it should just do, it should do just fine. But what happens is I'll be able to see when they germinate through through here and then I'll be able to put it under the light it also helps keep the humidity so keeping it under this or keeping it under something similar to this will make sure that the soil stays as moist as possible for as long amount of time as it needs to so I don't really have to even worry about the soil um, drying out under this dome probably for the next seven days at least so I'll just keep a good like watch on it but this is just really an example of how to start seeds indoors and then if you give one quick second I'm gonna turn on the power so you can see exactly what the light looks like and how uh, the light hits the plants and they're able to grow indoors for the for the time being so with the color of the light it may be hard to see um you can see the light has like a uh, like a purple like a reddish purplish hue but it's like it's got like red and blue spectrum lights on it and then these lights are are like a it's like a you can't really see it but it's it's just like a soft white like it has a full spectrum of light on it um but you can see how i pretty much have all the plants under the light the last couple days I've been able to keep it under this light, These, this kale in particular, the ones that's, that's gotten really leggy and I can tell how, how they've sturdied up that they're liking the light that they're under right now. And then some other things that sprouted like the tomato, like a tomato I started a couple weeks that sprouted, um, some more tomatoes right there. None of the, none of the peppers have sprouted yet um, and then all the herbs that I showed earlier. But that's what the setup looks like once the lights are on and then like I said before, once these sprout, I'll move these under the light and then I'll probably move some of these outside and then once it's warm enough, I'll hopefully I'll be able to move everything outside and not have to worry about using up energy and electricity to try to grow these seedlings indoors. 
so it's a little rainy outside today but i want, wanted to still um, give an update on what i've been doing in the yard i haven't made a whole lot of updates over the last couple weeks or the last week or so um, but i did do a couple things and i just want to walk through that real quick before i end the video um, so for the steps i kind of evened them out a little bit more um, i didn't do it with the level yet so what i'm gonna still do is I'm gonna mark these off and make sure they're completely straight before they go a little bit deeper into the ground because I'm gonna dig a small, a small hole around, like a small squared hole around each one. That way it's level with uh, the, the main patio. Uh, but what I ended up doing was moving it over probably about six inches um, from like the corner, maybe even about eight inches from this corner right here. So I moved it up this way just for a little bit more of an even, even walkway. And I, I added a couple more steps as well too. So if you go all the way through, so you can see I'll walk, walk on it. But previously, um, before I added the third garden box, I didn't have any of these steps right here around this garden box. So that kind of gives me access to the entire thing without having to walk on the grass if I don't need to. And then over here, at first I was going to put the garden box directly beside this one but it would have it would have put a big it would have it would have left a big amount of like the garden area that i wouldn't have been able to access if i did it that way um so these squares are about a foot wide so it gives me enough space to kind of walk through and then i can uh, you know do work on this side as well as do work on this side i don't have anything growing but i just wanted to put uh like the trellises up to see how they would fit and then i added them added some more squares and some more tiles all the way to this side of the garden box and then between the videos over the last couple of weeks, I went ahead and filled up this garden box. So this is pretty much the same exact mix that I used for the other two. It's a 50-50 mix of topsoil and compost, which is a pretty good mix that you can start off with and not really have to add any nutrients to. The only thing about this one, it's a little bit more clumpy than I typically like it to be. Like, as you can see, this one has a pretty good consistency. I mean, I'll zoom in a little bit more, but you can see this one has a pretty good uh, consistency. Um, it has enough drainage but it's still fertile enough to be able to feed the plants really well. This new one is a little bit more clumpy than I typically like it to be. So it's a little bit uh, harder to kind of get into. And some of the pieces are a little bit more clumped up together. So what I'll probably end up doing before I plant anything in this one is adding some sand to it. And then I'll probably add maybe some perlite as well too, just to kind of aerate it a little bit more, just so it has a little bit more uh, room to breathe and a little bit more oxygen can get through. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty proud of, you know, being able to fill this one up pretty quickly. And then turning back around, what I ended up doing too is adding, I'll go back around this path real quick. So what I ended up doing with the greenhouse is, the greenhouse I had last year is pretty much the same frame for it. It's like green metal uh, piping. It's almost, I don't, I don't even really know exactly what material it's made out of, but it's, it's pretty durable, like small, thin metal piping. So the frame was fine, but the plastic that I used last year was really cheap. Um, so it tore up pretty easily. So I went ahead and replaced that. And what I did is, this is basically just, um, I think it's I think it's polyurethane or polyethylene. I'm not really sure. I'm not really versed with plastics like that. But it's one or the other and it's six mil. So it's, it's pretty thick. It should, it should at least last for one full growing season. I'm hoping anyway. Um, and what I'm doing is basically just, I have a thermometer in here that measures the temperature and it measures the humidity as well. So you can see the humidity is real high right now since it's raining and then the temperature is pretty low but it's not under freezing. And so what I'll do is probably add something on the bottom there too. That way the cold ground won't push like the cold air or the cold temperature up into the greenhouse. And I'm really waiting for it to be consistently above freezing even when it's freezing on the outside before I put any of the seedlings or any of the um, you know other plants out here so they can go ahead and get like full sunlight. So that's pretty much all I've done with the garden um, in a landscaping perspective so far. What I plan on doing is those spots where the, the tiles were previously, I'll fill them up with topsoil and then I'll plant some more grass seed once it gets a little bit warmer. Fescue really needs to be planted in the fall but it can also be planted, planted early spring. So I'll probably do that early spring the backyard doesn't get too much sun in the afternoon, so I think it should be fine. Um, but I just wanted to give an update before I ended the video. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, make sure you tune in next week for the video. I'll be giving a little bit more landscaping updates while my seedlings are starting to grow. And then hopefully we can um, we can go ahead and start transplanting some things outside in the next couple weeks or next month or so. And go ahead and get some of the stuff in the greenhouse as well. But until next time.